This video is eight and a half minutes and contains four examples of inequalities. Okay, example one, solve the inequality that 3x plus 7 is greater than or equal to x plus 2, where x is an element of z or an integer. So let's write it out what we have. 3x plus 7 is greater than or equal to x plus 2. Now this is a lot like an equation. We'd like the x's on the left hand side and the numbers on the right hand side. At least they're all on the same side. To do this, if we take x from both sides, and we'll do it to both sides to be fair, and we take 7 from both sides. So if we do this to the left hand side, we take x from 3x and we end up with 2x. And we take 7 and we have no constant. And this is greater than or equal to, we take the x away, so that's gone, and take 7 from 2 is minus 5. Now, if we divide both sides by 2, it will give us x rather than 2x, and that's greater than or equal to minus 5 over 2, which is the same as 2.5 or 2.5, minus 2.5 or minus 2.5. Now, we want to show this on a number line, and we know that x is a, an integer. Z stands for integer, and an integer is any whole number, plus or minus, or equal to 0. So, since minus two and a half is the interesting number, we at least start maybe at minus three. So minus two and a half is there with the integers that are whole numbers and it's bigger than this, since x is bigger than this. And the arrow at the end represents that this continues. Okay, example two, solve the inequality where one sixth of x minus one is greater than or equal to one third of uh, x minus four. But what I'd like to do first is maybe multiply both sides by six. When I do that, I get x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 2x minus 8. So both sides have been multiplied by 6, and this is fair. Now what I'd like to do is maybe get the, the x's on the left-hand side and the numbers on the right-hand side. So I'm going to take 2x from both sides, and I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So when I do this, I end up with minus x is greater than or equal to minus 7. I don't like minus x. So I'm going to multiply both sides by minus 1. Now when I do this, I change the direction of the inequality as well. So I change all the signs and the direction of the inequality. And that's the important thing to watch out for here. So x is smaller than or equal to 7. And it's an element of r, which is a real number, which means all numbers on the number line. So it's all the bits in between the integers as well. Now this plus 7 is the interesting number. So We'd write out numbers, maybe go down to some negative numbers as well. And it includes 7, so there's a full dot to show it includes 7, and it goes the whole way down, and the arrow shows this continues forever, numbers smaller than 7. Example 3, solve the inequality where minus 9 is smaller than 3 minus 4x, and that's smaller than or equal to 1. We'll write out the inequality. Now, if I take 3 from all, and there's 3 sides to this, if you, if you will. And this is fair because I'm doing it every place. So this gives me minus 12 is smaller than minus 4x, which is smaller than minus 2. Now I'd like in the middle part to just have x on its own. That's what I'm aiming for. So what I'll do now is I'll divide everything by 4. I, I'll deal with the minus sign later. So the plan is just divide everything by 4. Again, this is fair because I'm doing it to all three parts. So I'm dividing by 4. When I do this, minus 12 divided by 4 is minus 3. Minus 4x divided by 4 is minus x. And this is smaller than or equal to minus 2 divided by 4 is minus a half. Now, I don't like minus x in the middle. I'd like it to be plus x. So now I'm going to multiply everything by minus 1. When I do this, I change the direction of the inequalities as well. So this gives me 3 is bigger than x, which is bigger than or equal to a half. Now, normally we'd write the inequalities with the smaller numbers first on the left-hand side. So I'm just going to rearrange this. I'm going to re rearrange the statement. Now, a half is smaller than x. I'm going to write the smaller number first. So a half is smaller than or equal to x, and x is smaller than 3. Now, we want to show this on a number line. An x is an element of r, which is a real number, which means we'll be showing all the little bits between the integers. Now, we'll write out numbers we certainly want to go maybe a little bit above 3 so we might go as far as 4 or 5 maybe put in a couple of negative numbers 
Now it doesn't include three, so we put a full empty or an empty circle here to represent three, but it does include a half, so that's a full dot. And the difference there is important. The empty circle at three, because three is not included itself, but just everything below that. But it does include the half. Okay, in example four, again we have a double inequality, but they're separated. So we solve set A first and then set B. So let's write out what set A is as a starting point. So to find out what the solution set to A is, we see that A is pretty straightforward inequality. 7 is smaller than or equal to 10 minus 3x. Now again, we usually like the x's on the left-hand side and the numbers on the right-hand side. So how would we do this? Well, if we add 3x to both sides and take 7 from both sides, it would achieve this aim. So adding 3x to the left-hand side, we get 3x, take 7, that cancels out to 7, that's there. 10 minus 7 is 3, and taking away the 3x. So we have 3x is smaller than or equal to 3. But we want x, so we divide both sides by 3. Again, this is fair. doesn't change the inequality or anything. x is still smaller than 1. And we divide it in. And that's the answer to A. What's the answer to B? Again, we do this inequality separately again. So we'll write out the inequality. 2 is bigger than 4 thirds minus 2x. Now again, to solve this, we would like to have maybe the x's on the left-hand side and the constant numbers on the right-hand side. So the plan here is if we add 2x to both sides and take 2 from both sides, well, the left-hand side will still be bigger than the right-hand side. So adding 2x and taking 2, we end up with 2x on the left-hand side. And taking 2 from 4 thirds, we get minus 2 thirds. Now we just want x, so if we divide both sides by 2, this gives us that x is bigger than minus 1 third. Again, there was no reason to change the direction of inequality here. We didn't divide by or multiply by minus 1 at any stage. Now the last one, what is A intersection B? So what do these have in common? So to bring these together, that x is both smaller than or equal to 1, but bigger than minus 1 third. So what we're saying is, at the lower end, we write down minus a third. At the upper end, value of x is 1. And x is in the middle here. Now x is bigger than 1 third, but it's smaller than or equal to 1. And so that's the solution to A intersection B. Now we want to graph this on a number line. So we draw our number line. Again, we're putting in numbers. We might separate it quite large here. Do you know, we need to put in a whole pile of numbers. So we're going from minus 1, maybe up to minus 2. So a, th a third here is clearly seen. It doesn't include a third. So we use an empty circle, but it does include 1. And that's a full circle and everything between. That's the last example in this section.